Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com where today I'm going to help you learn a little bit about exporting HD video for YouTube. Some of the stuff I do and some of the stuff that YouTube recommends you do uh, just to help you get a better understanding of how you can get better looking, higher quality video uh, up on YouTube without the degradation of quality because nobody likes degradation of quality. Um, now one quick thing before we get into this. Uh, if you don't use Premiere, these settings still kind of stand true across all the video editors that are out there. Uh, you can use these settings and go ahead and export your video and get great high quality video for YouTube in no time flat. So let's jump into Premiere right now and check this thing out. All right, well, here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro. Let's take a look at some export settings and how I export my video. Now, before we get into export settings, I just want to mention a couple things. If you just have really bad quality video or video that's blurry or, you know, just kind of like not the greatest video, exporting using the best export settings in the world is not going to make bad video look good. It's just going to preserve really nice video that you've already shot and allow it to continue looking great when you upload it and share it with your friends or share it with the world or, or uh, whatever project it is that you are working on. So that's first and foremost. And secondly, this tutorial is going to assume that you uh, understand things like basic uh, frame rates, 2997, 23976, uh, 24 frames, 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, you name it. Just have a basic understanding of what your footage has been shot in. Um, also, that you're working with footage that is at least 1920 by 1080. This, after all, is a, a tutorial on exporting standard 1080p HD footage for YouTube. So with all that out of the way, how do I export footage for YouTube? Well, the first thing I like to do is set an in and an out point. So move your playhead in Premiere to where you want your video to begin, hit the letter I, and that's going to set an in point, and then move all the way to the very end and hit O. The nice thing about setting an in and out point is you only select part of your timeline. That seems very obvious, right? But the nice thing about this is sometimes there's extra video assets, clips, and things that kind of get congested at the back end of your timeline. Well, in order to avoid exporting them too and having big areas of black and then just random sporadic bits of video and audio and whatever you have back there is just carve out the chunk that you want to export using in and out and it's so fast and easy once you start doing it it's like a peace of mind thing where I know that only this is getting exported this is the section of my timeline that I've approved for export and that's all that's going to get sent out to the world then I would go file export and export media now here in the export settings, the very first thing I like to make sure I have sort of down pat is my source range down here. I make sure this is set to sequence in out. That way we actually utilize those in and out points that we created, not the entire sequence. Sequence in out is the way to go. Uh, up in here, we have the ability to, to change the overall format and then choose a preset if we like. And in fact, if you're in Premiere Pro, there is a great YouTube 1080p HD preset, which if that's all you're interested in and you don't care about any of the technical details, I would recommend just roll with that. Go with it right now. Export your video is going to be just fine. If you're interested in knowing kind of why and what we're doing, uh, stick around because that's what we're going to cover. So here in this dialog box, we have effects, which I never use. I've never used it for a single video project ever in the time I've used Premiere. Video and audio tabs, which I use all the time. And the captions tab, which I sometimes use if I'm working with captions. Publish, I never use that. Multiplexer, and I, I don't mess around with that either. So here under video, we have our basic video settings where we right now we have match source selected. And what that's going to do is take the size of your sequence, which we looked at before was 1920 by 1080, and it's going to use that. You could uncheck this and dial in an exact size if you had something specific in mind. Uh, your frame rate, which of course we pretty much always just want to copy what we've got. Uh, progressive field order, uh, and then the aspect is just square pixels 1.0, uh, NTSC. Uh, you could choose to render at maximum uh, depth as well. I'm going to leave that unchecked for now. And as we scroll down, we get to our bitrate settings. And here I can see that the bitrate encoding is CBR, which stands for constant bitrate. But we have the options of VBR1 pass and VBR2 pass, which we're going to talk about in a second. Um, but that's those are basically your settings. We're not messing with the VR, and we don't need to worry about keyframe distance uh, in this case. One of the things that I do want to point out that's kind of important is, number one, you can click on the output name. You can change the name of your file that's exporting, which is great, and choose where on your hard drive you want it to be saved. And also, just make sure you check yeah, export video video and export audio. There have been times where I've forgotten to check those on. Now, by default, if you just leave them checked on all the time, they're going to be checked on. But just know if some if funny business is happening, make sure that those are checked on because sometimes it can be very frustrating wondering why audio is not appearing. And lo and behold, you forgot to check on export audio or something dumb like that. Uh, back to the, the video tab here. Uh, so down here with bitrate settings, uh, what better place to learn about the bitrate settings that work with YouTube than going straight to the source and seeing what Google specifically recommends that creators use when they're uploading their videos to YouTube. 
And here we have it, recommended upload encoding settings, a container MP4, which we're using, audio codec AAC, we haven't really talked about audio yet, a video codec H.264, we can see there, yeah, we chose H.264, that's great. Uh, and here, frame rate, and basically this is just, you know, what your, whatever your project is, you know, anywhere from 24 to 60 frames per second, that works, that's great, that's cool. It talks a little bit about deinterlaced footage and progressive, and, you know, if you're interested in learning about that, you can find tutorials and articles and things about that as well. We're not really talking about that here in this video. Uh, what I'm most interested in is the bit rate here. So the, the bit rate is going to affect the quality of each and every individual second of your footage. I'm interested here in the 1080p standard HD and it says look at up to 30 frames per second, 24 to 30 frames per second, go with 8 megabits per second, you'll be cool. Uh, 48 frames to 60 frames per second, hey bump it up to 12 megabits per second, life's good. We're not messing around with HDR so we don't need to worry about that right now. Now I'm a little like, I don't know if I'm conspiratorial I like to think that if I upload slightly higher quality than what they're recommending, my videos end up a little bit better. I don't know, YouTube or Google, of course, they'd never come out and say anything like that. But I, I, I usually look at this number, 8 megabits per second, and just say, you know what, I'm going to double that. So up to 30 frames per second, I actually go 16 megabits per second, and up to 60 frames per second, I go 24 megabits per second. So over here, I would say, look, 16 megabits per second. Now, the problem is I don't really like to use constant bit rate. I like to use VBR, which is variable bit rate. Now, there's VBR 1 pass and VBR 2 pass. I like to go with VBR 1 pass almost always because it exports faster. VBR 2 pass does a full second pass, which just takes twice as long to export. Nothing wrong with it if, if you can wait the time, um, but I know a lot of people, you want to kind of get the video out and, and move on with life. The way VBR works is it analyzes your video and it says, hey, we have a very simple scene here. Maybe the camera's locked down on a tripod just with a, a still shot of a room, nothing's moving, uh, or maybe there's not much movement. This is a scene that doesn't need a lot of data, so we can really compress this scene and we're not going to lose a lot of detail. You're not going to get a lot of artifacting or fragmentation of edges, things like that, because stuff isn't changing for frame to frame, second to second. So we can really cut out the amount of data that's being poured into this and cut down on file size. And then it can analyze a much more detailed scene, maybe something where there's a lot of trees blowing in the wind, there's a lot of fine edge detail that's changing frame to frame to frame, and it can say, yeah, we need to pour more data into this, preserve as much of that detail and information as we can. So I like to go with VBR, and here's where I would just say, look, target bitrate, keep me right around 16 megabits per second. So of course some scenes might be able to go lower than that. Some might shift a slight, high, a slight bit higher than that, but 16 megabits is where the neighborhood in which it's going to live, and it's a good place to be. And basically, the second pass in VBR2 pass goes over the footage again and does this even more effectively, preserves even more detail in your video. So that's pretty much it. Then I would go and I would save the preset and, you know, however you want to name is fine. I typically like to name for what I'm using it for. So this would be like, you know, YouTube 1080p upload. Some people like to use the stats. You know, this is H.264. It's VBR1. It's 16 Mbps. And just pour that information into there. So there's really no right or wrong way. Use whatever naming convention you like. And then over here with audio, yep, we're going with AAC, which is exactly what YouTube recommends in the audio section here. And uh, sample rate of 48,000 hertz. Um, I got stereo. Audio quality, of course, just roll with high because why not? And then the bit rate, I generally just push this as high as it'll let me go. 320, 320 it is. And then uh, I'm just going to keep this set to bit rate down here. I don't, I, don't, I don't mess with that. And that's that's it. That's really what I do. And then I go ahead and save it and then I hit the export button, boom, and I'm ready to go. Now, one of the cool things about exporting from Premiere is once you've got your stuff set up, maybe you're, you've created two YouTube videos, you can hit the Q button and that's going to send your video over to Adobe Media Encoder to be exported there. And what you can do is you can queue up multiple videos in Adobe Media Encoder and it's going to take the settings like where you're saving them on your hard drive and the actual video settings themselves here, right? All of this stuff. It's going to take all of that and leave it and rest it here in Adobe Media Encoder and lock it in for you. And you could stack up 20 videos in here or whatever you wanted and hit the little play button and it'll export them all. Meanwhile, you could go back to Premiere Pro and continue working on that or another video project. So it's a really, really cool... Uh, a really cool way to work with the exporter here in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, just for fun, before we go, let's take a look at a few video files that I've exported at a few different qualities and see the difference here. So I've got a few. I got one here, VBR1 pass at three megabits per second. 
Uh, I've got VBR two pass at you know 16 to 32 with two pass. You have two options for setting your uh, megabit per second count. Uh, constant bit rate at one megabit per second. You can see that's a tiny file, three megabytes, uh, and then all the way up to constant bit rate at 32 megabits per second. So let's look first. Let's go with the the biggest file. This constant bit rate. You can see 81 megabits. Uh, megabytes, excuse me, for 22 seconds of footage. And if we play through it, it's just, it's practically as exactly high quality as the footage I had in Premiere was. In fact, any sort of uh, over sharpened edges, that was in the video that I was using. That's not a side effect of this video exporting. So this looks great like this. There's plenty of sharp edges and detail. Let's go back and let's see what the difference between 32 megabits per second and one megabit per second is. So I'm just going to zoom back and let's try to find maybe about the same frame here. So we were just getting ready to zoom over this building here. And we can see there's just a massive difference when all of this information is moving. You can hardly make out any of the detail on the ground. You've got all kinds of artifacting falling apart. I mean, look at the side of the building here where the sun is lighting it. And then go to the higher quality one where the sun is lighting it. There's a ton more detail. So there's definitely a huge difference, but that's not really, that, that's not helping us. Let's look at VBR one pass where we triple the data rate from the one megabit per second to three. So we can do this and we can see still there's just, there's a lot of fragmenting and artifacting here in the foreground. Let me just zoom this back one. And let's go up to the VBR one pass 16 megabit per second, which is the one that I recommended. Now, a couple things really, really quick. This is five times bigger than three megabits, right? So you're just going to have to live with a larger file size, but you're still only half the file size of that constant bit rate at 32 megabits per second. So interesting to note, fun to look at. Uh, I'm going to move this over. I'm going to try to find about the same exact frame right about there. So you can see here, uh, the difference is, is pretty immense. I mean, we can just see here with this building in the foreground with these plants or whatever on the roof, a nice, relatively sharp image. And then over here, it's just it's just a blurry mess, right? It's not, it's not that great. So it does make a big difference, but you can see here with the 16 megabits per second, it's a nice quality. It looks good. It looks sharp. And it looks like the way you would want it to look when you're uploading your videos to YouTube. So yeah, there you have it. That's how I like to export HD video from Premiere for YouTube. Uh, we didn't get into 4K or anything like that, but if you're interested in me making a tutorial on 4K, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll see what I can do. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, guys, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just press that red button or whatever color it is for that case. Subscribe to the channel so you never miss any tutorials in the future. And for learning about some bitrate and different audio settings and frame rates and all the little this, that, and the other thing that goes along with exporting video from Adobe Premiere Pro, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. NathanielDodsonTutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.